Sometimes I get something to review that I really want to like, like this tiny NAS from TerraMaster that can house eight NVMe drives. Yeah, eight. I have so many mixed feelings on this thing, I really don't know where to start. Guess I'll go ahead and give you the stats. It's a relatively small device coming in at this size right here, packed with an i3 and 305 eight core CPU, 16 gigs of RAM and 10 gig networking. As for the rest of the IO, it's pretty standard with three USB 10 gig ports, one type C and two type A, and then an HDMI port. In terms of cooling, there are two small fans, which are adequate enough to get the job done. The internals are accessible by removing a single thumb screw, and just like you after two margaritas, it comes right out of its shell. The whole selling point for this though is the eight NVMe slots, four on each side of the motherboard. And this model will cost you $800, which honestly is pretty freaking expensive. I was hoping to see it come in at around $599, but it is what it is. Okay, so that's all the surface level objective stuff out of the way. And at this point, it seems like a pretty neat little device, but I had two big concerns before trying this thing out. One is that I'm not known for being the biggest fan of TerraMaster software. Sure, they make pretty solid hardware and they do allow you to install whatever OS you want on it, but their TOS isn't the best. However, I was told that this would come loaded with a beta of TOS 6, their newest version of their NAS software, so that's promising. The second fear I had was that we wouldn't fully be able to utilize eight whole NVMe drives with this underpowered hardware. And getting full bandwidth out of eight NVMe drives isn't trivial, so this is a valid concern. Let's tackle the hot new software first. Note that this is a beta, but I was told it's essentially as close to production as it's gonna get. However, I don't do reviews on beta software, so I just wanted to see if they made improvements where they needed to, and that's in the UI presentation, responsiveness, and with their backup options. The setup was pretty straightforward and easy to manage. That's actually really important with these kind of off the shelf setups, because a lot of people buying these want something easy. They don't want to tinker. I set up two different pools, one of them with four of the NVMe drives in RAID 0 for maximum speed and maximum opportunity for data failure. Then I set up one with three of the drives in a RAID 5 configuration for a more standard setup. It oddly defaulted this to their T-RAID setup, which I think is their automatic RAID thing that has an approach similar to how Unraid does theirs with the ability to use mismatched drives, so it's kind of cool, I guess. With the last drive, I set this as a hot spare on this pool so that it can be used to fix a failed device without bringing the entire system down. The very basics of the software are solid, but let's see if they made those improvements that I mentioned before. Well, I'm happy to say that the UI is very much improved. Everything seems to be very responsive, clean, and intuitive. Settings are where you'd expect them to be, the overview charts are useful, the links bring you to relevant content, it's just a more polished experience overall. Creating a share was extremely easy too, you just go into the shared folders, click create, and fill out the options you want, like which volume you want to use, if you want encryption, how you want to set permissions, if there's a storage quota, and boom, it's done. It's nice you don't have to play around with many other settings, and since Samba is enabled by default, I could just navigate directly to that share I created from my Windows machine. I sent over a large zip file to test it out, and we were getting just over five gig speeds. Pretty nice. Not quite the full 10 gig, which is kind of disappointing, cause with four NVMe drives in RAID 0, I know we have the bandwidth, but more on that in a bit. The next thing that was an absolute ball crusher in TOS 5 was how terrible their backup suite was. There was no way to actually do automated backups from your client devices outside of rsync, which works, but I mean, for off the shelf NAS operating systems, that's unacceptable. I mean, they had a TerraSync app and centralized backup app, but those were in beta and legit didn't even have client apps available for download. Well, boys and girl, that has changed. When opening the dedicated backups app, you're greeted with a super useful graphic that helps you understand which apps are used for each backup scenario. Of all the big brand NAS providers, how is TerraMaster the only one who does this? This is awesome. You can see for two-way sync from your clients, you'd use TerraSync, and for more direct backups of entire systems, 
you'd use centralized backup. Then to back up your NAS, you have a variety of other options. The two I really wanted to try were TerraSync and centralized backup. TerraSync is gonna be your app you install on your client that lets you do real-time syncing between folders on your client and your NAS. Last time I tried to do this, they didn't even have a TerraSync client app, so you couldn't even do it. Now, well, there still isn't a TerraSync app. I had to do a Google search and click on some random blog post to find out that the TerraSync client is built into the TNAS desktop app. So I went to the TerraMaster downloads page to get that. They really should make this more intuitive. At the very least, put a link somewhere in the NAS UI to download the client. Anyway, after downloading the app, it was pretty clear that we now have access to TerraSync. After initially failing to connect to the NAS because I can't type my password correctly, I eventually got in. I could then create a sync job which would allow me to select a folder on my client to sync with a folder on my NAS. I wish there was a way to create a new folder from the desktop client because I had to go into the NAS UI to do that, but it's not really a big deal. Then it asked which kind of sync job I wanted along with if I wanted any file type exceptions, which is a nice feature to include. After that, we were syncing. It was pretty quick since I didn't have much in there, but it worked exactly as expected. In the NAS UI, I can browse the files and restore them as I need to. They have a versions tab, which is cool. You can select a date and see what the sync directory looked like at that point in time and restore it from there. I'm not sure how far back this goes since there wasn't really settings to modify it, so I, I don't know. Overall, the bar was certainly low for this since it didn't even work before, but man, it's pretty solid. Before getting into centralized backup, I did want to try snapshots since we are using ButterFS as our file system, so snapshots are a big deal. Going into the snapshots section allows us to select a shared folder that we'd like to take a snapshot of. It seems that you are limited to shared folders here, which is kind of strange. I'd like to have the ability to select any directory on my entire NAS. Then of course you select how often you want to take the snapshot and how many versions you want to keep. This again worked just as expected, but a snapshot just like your ex is only worth it if you can get it back. So I tested the restore feature, which allowed me to select the exact snapshot I want, then restore it to a directory of my choosing. This has to be an empty directory, so again, let me create a folder directly from the UI that requires it. But after that, we were good. My new directory now contained the exact copy of the snapshot that I was restoring from. Beautiful stuff. The last backup tool that I wanted to try was centralized backup. This is the direct competition to my favorite piece of backup software, which is Synology's Active Backup that allows you to install an agent on all of your client devices and manage full system backups for everything directly from your NAS. Can TerraMaster compete with that? Well, kind of. They're on the right track. Similar to Active Backup, you'll install the agent software on your clients and log in. From there, they will show up in the NAS UI and everything can be managed from here. The first thing you'll do is create a backup task where you can choose which type of backup, system backup, custom volume, or full system backup. I really don't know what the difference is between system backup and full system backup, and there really isn't any explanation. And custom volume is just selecting a mounted drive on the system. I went ahead and selected system backup. Synology is definitely ahead on making this process more clear to the user. Of course, I then had to test my ability to do a restore. This is where I think it falls a bit behind Synology. I can select a backup task and which folders I want to restore to the system, which is good, but I don't seem to have the ability to easily browse my backed up volumes, nor can I create a full system restoration media device. Both of these things are things that I can do with Synology that are what make it a 10 out of 10 piece of software. But like I said, TerraMaster is making strides here, so fingers crossed we get some enhancements moving forward. All right, I know that was a lot of backup stuff, but that's very important, if not the most important aspect of a NAS. Other stuff like virtualization, Docker, media management, all that, I'll maybe cover in a dedicated TOS 6 video when it's officially released. But for now, Let's move on to my other concern. Can you get the full beans out of each of the NVMe drives that you install in here? Well, unfortunately not. 
Remember how I created two pools, one with RAID 0 and one with RAID 5? That was to see if there was a significant difference between the two in terms of speed. Good news is that there is. The bad news is that they're both underwhelming. I first tested my RAID 0 pool and got some pretty decent speeds. If I was testing a single drive. This led me to believe TerraMaster was doing something weird with the RAID config, but I checked and it's standard MDADM RAID on the back end, so pretty normal stuff. Then I ran a test on the RAID 5 pool and oh boy, that's just not great. One gigabyte per second on an NVMe pool. I was pretty sure that this had to come down to a PCIe limitation and upon checking, this was the issue. Each of the NVMe slots in this NAS is limited to a single lane of PCIe Gen 3 speeds. For reference, this comes out to just about one gigabyte per second, so those speed tests make sense now, huh? This is honestly pretty frustrating, but I'm gonna try to look at it from both sides. From the consumer side, it's shit. I bought this NAS with room for eight NVMe drives, so I'd expect at the very least to get a single drive's worth of performance out of them. I mean, I don't expect them to put, your drives will max out at one gigabyte per second on the front page of their marketing, but. Okay, so I'm editing the video right now, and uh, well, they do actually say that that's what the uh, drives max out at, so. I guess just do your research before. I honestly didn't think this was in the marketing until I scrolled down to get a screenshot and there it was. But I'll go ahead and play the rest of the video because I think some of what I say after this still stands true. So just had to interject and uh, show you guys how much of a smooth brain caveman I am it's still kind of disingenuous to assume your target audience would understand that they need to research which CPU is in here, then look up how many PCIe lanes it has, and at what speeds, then assume the config for each of these connections. From the TerraMaster side, it's a way to offer a compact, low cost, low power device with room for tons of high speed storage. But I'm not a TerraMaster employee, I don't know how to run a business. So overall, let's see if I can articulate some kind of meaningful conclusion of this. The hardware itself is a double-edged sword. Yes, it's small, it's quiet, and it sips power. Hell, when I was doing my full Windows backup to this thing, it was only pulling 25 watts. And yes, the internals are super easy to access. And yes, you can load your own OS on here. But the actual performance of what's being marketed is underwhelming and it's expensive. From the software side, I'm quite impressed though. Like I said, I was on the TOS 6 beta version, but as we saw, they made huge improvements to the core functionality of their software. I do believe TerraMaster is now ready to compete with the big boys like Synology, QNAP, and oddly enough, Ugreen. I guess we need to answer, who is this device for then? Honestly, it's a tough question because the people out there looking to get super high speed redundant NVMe storage probably have a very specific use case. And those people probably aren't looking for an off the shelf desktop like solution. I guess there are people out there who want a tiny low power NAS with the ability to cram a ton of high speed storage in there for virtualization and to host their media content. Maybe when TOS 6 is officially out, I'll give that a try. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know down in the comments what you'd use this thing for. But that's all I have. If you like this video, then drop a like. If you wanna see more content like this, then subscribe. I wanna give a huge shout out to my YouTube members and my Patreons. You guys are my tiny, compact, high speed NAS with full fat four lanes worth of PCIe Gen 4 goodness to each drive. Y'all are the jam. And if you're still watching, you're Gen 3 by 1. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next one.